Story introduction. The story starts us out at our favorite gothic vacation spot in permanently rainy province of Wallachia. Due to mankind being assholes from times of peace, Dracula is called to bring everyone back in line. It's up to our protagonist, Carrie Fernandez, to defeat Dracula so that mankind can continue to be assholes to each other. I think I might have read this from the wrong character's perspective. Oh well. Carrie's objective is to break into the castle and defeat Dracula. Dracula politely asks Carrie to go away, but she sternly stares down Dracula with sharp pixel eyes. You know, I'm beginning to think that's not actually Dracula. Carrie runs into a few noteworthy characters, such as this old dick who disregards my ability for not being a dude, and this perfectly normal woman who likes watering plants. Wait, white roses? Don't you mean- ah! Carrie continues to break into Dracula's castle, where she stumbles across a little boy in distress in the forest maze, who is the same boy from the violin intro of the game. I don't know, we should help this kid, he plays a pretty mean violin. We find out that his name is Malice. Wait, really? Malice? Malice? S just a slight sneaking suspicion, but let's just say I think the other guys have hypnotized Santa Claus and this kid is evil. The game continues with Carrie's quest to reach Dracula. Will she defeat Santa or will she save Christmas? Find out at the end of this review. Stuff working for you. Jumping and shooting homing missiles. Now this only applies if you picked Carrie and not Reinhardt at the beginning. The homing missiles are powerful enough that just shooting them off randomly often kills things you don't even see. Also, since you don't have to aim or anything, it leaves you free to hop around like an idiot avoiding enemy attacks. I use the secret technique passed down for generations in the Fernandez family, of jumping constantly and firing without even sparing my enemies a glance. Being unaware of my enemies makes me unaware of fear. It's also why I'm the only Fernandez left. Oh well, spilt milk and all that. Thankfully, this doesn't completely destroy the game since there are drawbacks using homing missiles. First is that they fire very slowly, so fast enemies can just run away from them. Second is that you can only have one on the screen at a time, so if you fire after a fast enemy and it starts chasing him around, you can't charge a second one until it's died off. The third thing is you can't choose who they target. Sometimes you shoot at one enemy and they decide to just go after someone else entirely. It's these trade-offs that keeps the game enjoyable despite having a magical homing missile. The game contains a lot of interesting and fun opponents. There are plenty of enemies that require you to change your attack strategy, keeping you on your toes. Vampires, dogs, skeletons, spats, suits of armor, and even motorcycle driving skeletons. Not really sure how that fits in the 19th century Dracula, but okay. The boss fights are one of the most impressive parts of this game. Each of them tests your skills differently whether or not you're trying to dodge their attack, time your offensive perfectly to clear through their defenses. It can be pretty challenging, but as long as you have some health items, you shouldn't be tearing your hair out from difficulty. Stuff working against you. Platforming. So I thought this game would be a mostly an action game when I came into it, but it turns out to be a large portion 3D platformer. Eventually I'll review it on platforming game. I thought at first that the second level was bad, where you have to climb a spiral staircase of pain, but that's back when traps did damage to you. Most of the jump puzzles in this game are instant death. Hopping between ice platforms, jumping across clock gears, one misstep, and you plummet to your death. No checkpoints either, you have to load from your last save point every time. One saving grace though is your character's ability to grab ledges, something I might not have beaten this game without. Controls! The controls can be pretty finicky at times. Much of my platforming frustration stems from accidentally side or back jumping off a platform when I meant to jump regularly. So many accidental catapult deaths. The camera's pretty frustrating as well to line up, so I can actually see things. This mainly caused me issues when fighting teleporting bosses, but homing missiles help make up for this. Nitro! Oh boy, Resident Evil all over again. But much worse. So this puzzle requires you to carry magical nitro from the top part of the level to the bottom part. The catch is, if you jump, you die. If you fall off a platform, you die. If you get hit by an enemy, you die. If you piss off the gear gods, you die. A combination of the length of the segment, no save points, glitchy explosion triggers, and just accidentally hitting the jump button makes this the most frustrating part of this game. Also, I hate skeleton motorcycles. Your hardest opponent. Platforms! Let's have a montage of platforms. <laughs>
story conclusion. Warning. Spoilers. <laughs> After you journey through Dracula's castle and through Dracula's winter vacation home, you finally reach Dracula's chambers. Sleeping inside the coffin, you find edgy Santa Claus. So this is what he's like when it's not Christmas. After a pretty fun battle trying to guess where he teleports and attacking him before he can attack you, you defeat Santa Claus. Christmas is... N not safe, I think. The castle begins to crumble and you must escape, running right by the save point like an idiot. On the way back out, however, you run into Malice riding a unicorn pegasus. His pure majestic form is enough to make the castle just straight up forget that it's crumbling. Except when he leaves and then it remembers. Once we reach the other side, we find out the truth. Santa Claus was just a servant of the darkness and that's Malice is Dracula. These characters really have intense game faces for this showdown. You can practically see the sparks flying between their stairs. This fight's a more advanced version of the Santa Claus fight where he teleports. Since when he teleports, he creates multiple flashes to throw you off from where he is. Just don't be stupid like me and jump off the stage. After you defeat him and steal the 100 year old chicken from his pocket, he reverts back to his child self. Wait, is this a friendship ending? Well, it's a Japanese game, so wait, 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 old man will have none of this. At first, I thought he was gonna run in and stake the kid and take all the credit for killing Dracula like a dick. But as it turns out, that was not Dracula's final form. For this last part, we get teleported to what looks like a desert near a volcano, a barren land that's on fire. Alright, what's he gonna be? A giant bat? A brawn too? Oh, a giant dragon centipede monster. Fuck, I don't want to fight that. Holy shit. Alright, maybe he's, maybe he'll be simple. Oh god, oh fuck, he's shooting nukes. Alright, well, uh, well, once you can survive the giant dragon centipede that shoots nukes and fires other fire dragons. Dracula is vanquished and you've saved the day. Somehow you've teleported to safety and watched from the distance as Dracula's castle crumbles. It crumbles so hard, rubble is falling out of the sky around the castle just to emphasize how much you destroyed Dracula. The game ends with Carrie visiting her mother's grave and staring triumphantly into the sun. So wait, 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 did we put Dracula to sleep or totally destroy him? I mean, we did explode him into a land of hellfire, but this is Dracula, so he'll probably be up and moving by Monday for the next Castlevania game.